Hello and welcome to the As I Own Watch Kid video tutorial series. I'm your host, David Smith, and today I'm going to be talking about the layout system that drives the UI of your WatchKit application. The layout system WatchKit uses is relatively simple, but it is nevertheless powerful enough to build some fairly complicated inter interactions and lay out quite a bit of content on the tiny screen on your watch. Let's get started. The layout system of a WatchKit application is based around the concept of groups. Groups are just bags that you can put UI components into, inside of and then control the layout of those components within a group. At its core, the inter interface of your, of your entire application is basically just a group. And within that you can put other groups and each of those groups can have other groups and so on and so on. At its core, that's how you control the layout. The system is built along the concept that essentially there's a, a not quite gravity, it's not quite like everything is pulled up and to the left because there are ways that you can pin content to the right and bottom, but functionally that's a good way to get started when you're, when you're thinking about a WatchKit application. A WatchKit application is essentially a fixed width uh, cross, so you, it, can, it can only be so many points wide, um, depending on the size of the, of the Apple Watch, whether it's the 38 or the 42 millimeter uh, model, the actual width will change, but functionally and conceptually you can think of it being infinitely tall. Um, so you're not really constrained in the vertical direction, you're only constrained in the horizontal direction. And so when you're laying out your controls, you don't have to be quite as thoughtful about the top to bottom, so obviously you want to keep that in mind. But what you really need to be thoughtful of is how they're going to lay out width-wise, because that is the strongest constraint um, to, on your actual layout. So I'm going to actually dive in and start showing you an example. So this is just um, a, project in watch, a project in Xcode that is designed to just demonstrate how, how this works. It's, there's not going to be anything fancy here. This isn't actually going to be an app that you'd, you'd want to work or ship, but it'll work. And so I can take a group and add it into my WatchKit application. And like I said, that is the build, basic building block. In almost everything you do, you're going to be adding groups and then putting things inside of those groups. The, inner, the entire application, your entire WatchKit app, is you could think of it basically as a vertically oriented group, and then you can put other groups within that. And so if I take two groups and add them to my main application, because it's vertically oriented, they will stack on top of each other, one and then the other. But you, not all groups have to be vertically oriented. You can, of course, also lay things out horizontally, which is the default for a group. And so say I take a picture and put it inside of a group, and then I take another picture and put it inside of a group. See how it lays them out horizontally. Um, so that's how you can stack things next to each other. And to make that a bit clearer, I'm just going to put an actual picture into those boxes. Now, as you can see when I did that, it got a little bit things didn't go quite right because these images over overflowed the bounds of that group. Now this is often going to happen because you have to control each con each control component of your WatchKit application has a different set of rules for how the layout system and engine is going to determine where to put it. And so this image, when I just dragged it in naturally, had a couple of things set to it. I said that its position is towards the left and vertically it's towards the top. That's sort of the gravity I was talking about, where you, by default, things are going to be kind of pushing themselves up towards the top left. You can change that, of course, and say I want this to be centered, I want it to be more sort of towards the right. But that's essentially all you're doing is saying, where is the, um, where is the push on this, this, um, on this component coming from? And if multiple components have that same gravity to apply to them, then they will all kind of lay out in a logical manner from that. You know, so if you tell two things to be laid out to the left, they'll stack next to each other on the left. If you tell them to be laid out to the right, they'll stack with each other to the right, as would sort of make sense. But the problem I ran into here isn't one of where they're positioning the size, because it, it, by default, these images said that they were going to lay out with size, uh, with width and height, both size to fit content. And this is a really cool thing that you can do to make the, your, your, your interface adapt dynamically to the content, especially powerful with text. So if you're going to display some, some, some text in, you know, in your interface, you can make the interface adapt to the height of something dynamically often to fill, to fill it all in. And so you can have a label 
that can be one line long if it's a short, you know, if the text is short, or if you say um, set the height to be size to set fit, and it's a long, long string, it'll just keep growing indefinitely um, until it can fit the whole string in, which is great. But in this case, that's not really what I wanted. What I want is an image that has two images stacked side by side. And so rather than making it size to fit content, I'm gonna go ahead and say relative to container. And this is a way of specifying it so that rather than its size being based um, on the content of the thing, in this case, on the, in the size of the image, the size the image wants to be, instead, it's based on the container that contains it. So in this case, that group that rounds, th that li lies out here that currently has two images in it. And you specify um, a, the size of something relative to container as essentially just as a percentage. Yeah. So in this case, if I specify 0.5 here, it'll take up half of the size of the image. Um, and the same thing, I'll do that over here. Now, it, it resized itself to make sure that it could fit um, the other one because the other one got smaller. But now if I lay these out like this, they're both going to be um, half, half the size of its, of its parent, which works out pretty well. And if I set the content mode to be aspect fit, you can see that. So the width is half of the, and so is the height. Now at the height is probably not what I actually meant there because the height of the group is somewhat arbitrary. In this case, the actual group itself is, in t is basically just saying that its width is relative to the container, so it's as wide as the, the, the watch is tall, and its height is set to fit the content. And so if you have two things kind of driving off each other where the, the parent group is saying, I'm going to be as big as my content, and the content is saying, I'm going to be half as big as my group, you can end up with these kind of circular things. And so that's probably not what I want. Maybe I'll make it fixed instead. I'll say I want the group um, to be 100 pixels, or 100 points rather, tall. And then maybe instead of making the, these 50%, I'll make them as tall as the group itself. And so now they're these, now these two images are laid out like you'd expect inside of that group. And this is, this is all you'll essentially be doing to lay out any kinds of controls and components inside of a WatchKit application. You'll typically be taking a group, laying it out either vertically or horizontally, and then you can work for it from there. And so say for example, I change that initial group to a vertical layout, and then I start putting other groups inside of it. There we go. Now, I'm going to give, give, these a, give these colors just so that you can more easily tell them apart. So, my parent group is vertically, is vertically oriented and is pink, and inside of it are two other groups that are blue. And as you can see, they, they, you know, these groups are, just, are relative to container and size to fit content, and so they just kind of fill the space. But one thing I don't really like is the way in which they're tied up against the sides on all the way around. Maybe it would be nice to have some insets. And so there's an inset panel here that has, has a default setting that seems to do not a lot of padding on the sides and, but does a fair bit in, sort of in between, but I can change that. Maybe I want to make it so that I have five points of padding all the way around my app, all the way around my components. And so this is on the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. And now it looks, a little, it looks better, but in the middle, there's this kind of odd space. It doesn't seem to match. And so I can do the same thing that I did when I adjusted the insets. I can also adjust the spacing. And so I can make the spacing between, those, between the two components get bigger and smaller as I would like. And so you start to be able to have some pretty fine-grained control over these components and the ways in which they're laid out. And you can do some pretty sophisticated things with this because obviously I can take other components and start putting them inside. So here's a label, and I want it next to that label, maybe I want to have an image. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and just make this uh, have a fixed layout, fixed size. I'm say 50 points big, by 50 points big. And this label, like I said, I want to make sure it's uh, have its height, size to the contents, its width, um, 
is size to fit content. And if I set it now to be zero lines long, which is essentially means um, that it will be as, it will use as many lines as it needs, and I put in some gibberish there, up, oh, the label got bigger. The label did exactly what I just said it would do. It keeps getting bigger to make sure that it can fit that control. And this is really powerful whenever you're laying out user-generated content or something that could be arbitrarily long. This ability to make the interface dynamically adjust to it is great. And the reason it's great, especially in a watch app, is that because not just, you're not just showing um, the inter the, you know, this information on a big screen, on like a, an, an iPhone 6 Plus, say, which is huge. On a watch, space is always constrained. The example I'm showing here, here is the 42 millimeter watch band and it's already pretty constrained. And so you could imagine if I was even on the 38 millimeter watch, I'd have even more constraints. And so if I want to be able to fit information on the screen, it's awesome that the layout system can dynamically resize things based on what they're showing. And so if you have a headline that's only a few words long, it can take up less space than a headline that's longer, rather than always having to default to making all of your uh, components exactly the same size. And so this is basically the core of the layout system inside of WatchKit. Like I, didn't, like I showed you in the last video, there's a bunch of different controls that you can incorporate into it. But at its core, all you need to do to think about when you're laying out your applications and designing them is how can I take this layout and put it into a set of groups and lay it out either vertically or horizontally and then decide the sizing of those components either to be a fixed size, you know, so it's so many points by so many points. It can be relative to the content of that control, you know, so for in the case of text, how long the text is, in the case of an image, how big the image is, or it can be relative to the parent. And the relative to the parent is the one that I seem to find myself using a lot, where I lay out my things to be sort of proportional, which works out great when I'm trying to design an interface that works both on the 38 millimeter and the 42 millimeter watch. So on the bigger watch, things just kind of get bigger. On the smaller watch, things get smaller because I've defined my components in a relative basis. I've said, you know, they're 20, it's, they're going to be 20%, they're going to be 30%, 50%, and so that percentage just scales up and down linearly. That's it for today's episode. Hopefully that was helpful. Next week in the series, I'm going to be taking a look at laying out table-based data in a WatchKit application. WatchKit allows you to, sh to display fairly large amounts of data, even on the tiny screen of an Apple Watch. If you'd like to know when that's coming out, please subscribe to the channel or to my website at david to know when that's ready. Thanks.